first attack came at uh, just before 8 o'clock uh, local time here in the morning, uh, right at the peak of rush hour, you know, when you have millions of people using the Moscow uh, metro system here. It's very popular and generally very, very packed indeed, obviously, during the rush hour time. Uh, the second blast taking place about 30 or 40 minutes after that. These were clearly coordinated attacks. There were some problems, shall we say, between uh, Russian people and um, some people who it may come from the Caucasus inside the metro, some rough handling of some men, and I guess people were jumping to conclusions already about who was responsible. A report there on the suicide bombers that hit Moscow earlier this week, leaving that country in something of a crisis. There is likely to be political fallout within Russian politics, but around the world as well. Here to tell us a bit about what's going on and what led up to that attack, Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation magazine. Katrina, welcome back. Um, they killed 39, these suicide bombers. They seem to have picked their targets very carefully. Subway stops that were close to key government agencies. Um, did they come from Chechnya? Do we know that for sure? We don't know for sure. Uh, but what we do know, Laura, is that this is the most recent um, in the last 10 years or so of 9-11s in Russia. You had the theater hostage taking in 2002. You had Beslan, which was outside of Moscow, but the seizing of school children by insurgents, terrorists from the Northern Caucasus. I think one needs to remember the history that President Putin came to power almost 10 years ago to this date on the basis of a strong arm, brutal repression of this region in the Northern Caucasus, which has been seeking independence, which Russia has been at war with two times, occupying that country. And I think for Muscovites, what was most shocking the other day was that there has been remission of this cancer on the body politic. The last terrorist attack on a metro was four years ago in 2006. But they had been led to believe that Putin had suppressed and had stabilized. And it is clear that that is not the case. Mm. Now, Putin had certainly claimed that reputation yes. for himself. Um, now, as uh, his, uh, you know, the, the guy following him, um, uh, Medvedev, tries to advance towards greater democracy, which is what he promised, yeah. and a kind of expanding of the political civil sphere, uh, what happens to that agenda? You know, uh, my husband, Stephen Cohen, and I were in Moscow just 10 days ago, staying 500 yards from Lubyanka, the metro station, which was attacked, which, by the way, is the headquarters of the FSB, the KGB, so a signal sent there. But what's so interesting in Moscow right now is you have what they call ten democracy. Mm. You have President Medvedev, you have Premier Putin. And Medvedev is trying in some ways to undertake a perestroika too, a liberalization, an economic modernization, a political modernization. He has given the first print interview to Russia's leading opposition paper a few months ago. And he spoke, if you followed this coverage in the last 24, 48 hours, he spoke, yes, of trying to stabilize the region, but he also spoke of the importance of paying attention to the political, economic, social consequences which have bred terrorism and so much anger in the Northern Caucasus. And Caucasus's. what's his power as president vis-a-vis -vis the prime minister Well, Premier. this is what we have to see play out, because this is a 9-11 in the sense we understand it here. What this may do in the short term is consolidate the strength of the security forces, the more repressive elements of Russian politics, Putin's politics, and undermine Medvedev. But Putin has staked his power on securing the Russian people from these attacks. And it may be that they turn and say, this isn't working. We need another course. In the short term, I fear there will be scapegoating and profiling of people from the Northern Caucasus. Who are, I mean, they talk about black widows. That's yeah. the name these, these suicide bombers have gotten. Who are they? Where'd they come from? Have you ever talked to any of these people? You know, I haven't. What's, what's interesting to me is that women on both sides, uh, the women of the soldiers who want to end the occupation and the military occupation of Chechnya, the Russian mothers, have been at the forefront of civil society in these last 10, 12 years. The black widows, Robert Pape, a scholar at the University of Chicago, has undertaken a project over the last 10 years, and his study of 40 of these black widows, uh, primarily uh, reacting to the occupation by their country, by their region of Russian forces, and have lost fathers, husbands, children. Very clear direction here. And I think also that the forces in this part of uh, the unstable federation um, use women 
because they think they will be less suspected. But there's great, there's a cycle of vengeance and anger here that only political and of course other measures, but I think Medvedev and his team better understand that the colonialism that Russia imposed on this region through this brutal president Kadyrov has to change into more of a federation. So there's no, you know, we've heard this story before, there's not a military solution, there's a I political know, one. I know, it's very applicable to... What about U.S. political, U.S. Russian relations? The start, New START treaty signed just last week, supposed to reduce arms um, uh, arsenals. Will any of that be affected? And what message does Barack no. Obama, who's maintained the Patriot Act and all the rest, bring to Moscow when they meet in light of all this? Well, I think they will have a signing in Prague, April 8th, uh, on what is a modest but important continuation of an arms reduction process that goes back many presidents, many Republican presidents. I don't think what happened in Moscow in these last horrifying days will impact that, except that it empowers the security and military forces in both countries who are often the least interested in reducing military weapons. Uh, but I do think it's a modest start. I mean, we forget with all the talk about Iran that it is Russia and the United States which have 95% of the nuclear warheads and weapons in the world. Uh, but, you know, arms control is the new realism. Will our Senate understand that? The arms control agreements of the last 30 years have had major bipartisan agreement, but this Republican Party may decide it wants to cripple and delegitimize and take down this to show its full frontal resistance. And what standing does Barack Obama have to say anything, really, about what Putin's response to these attacks might be. I mean, does he have any standing to say maybe increasing militarism and a greater clampdown is not the best way to go? Uh, I don't think uh, the U.S. government has a lot of standing in any of these areas. I think we need to get our own act together at home, our own democracy, our own ability to deal in sane ways with terrorism, counterterrorism. But I, I do think um, the arms control agreement will give Medvedev a little space. And I do think he is viewed here much more of, as a puppet than he is in Russia. I think the history of dual power in the Soviet Union and Russia always leads to unexpected consequences. And I would just add that he has also played, Medvedev has played an interesting role in the media in Russia. It is kind of shocking to read that Muscovites, Russians, couldn't see anything on their television, state-controlled television. But the internet is playing a growing role, and the print press is much feistier than it is in the city. We're sitting in New York, and in fact, the print press the day after was criticizing Russia's state-controlled TV for its failure to cover the terrorist attacks. And we can't forget that so many of the killings of journalists in Russia are related, again, to this cancer on the body politic that is the Chechen war and occupation. Katrina Vanden Heuvel, editor and publisher of The Nation magazine. Much more about the media in this country coming up in just a minute on Grit TV.